Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you might be watching. When you apply for positions, new jobs, you very often will go through an agency who more often than not will ask you to complete a test in Excel. They're looking to make sure that you have basic knowledge of Excel and uh, the t test will be something like the one that I'm about to show you and hopefully help you in your successful completion of the test at the employment agency. As we complete each task, we'll put a little tick over here so we know where we are. The first task is to place a border around cells. We'll place a border around E7 to G12. The border command is in the font group, this one here, and if you hover your mouse over various icons you'll see the tool tip. So I click the drop arrow and I want to choose a border. We'll choose outside borders. And when I click away, there is my border. So we can put a tick in that one as having been completed. Next task, format the data as currency. So I'm going to drag through and here in the number group I see the currency symbol a drop arrow gives me other choices. We'll format it as English United States and there are my currencies. If you don't want to see the two decimal points then here in the number group you have a button to decrease the decimals, show fewer decimal places and each time you click the decimals will be reduced by one. That of course is entirely up to you. Now it says wrap the text in D14 and H6. Well in D14 I have total cost by month. It went across through E14 because there was nothing in E14. So if I click on D14, I see there in the formula bar, that's the contents of that particular cell. And here in the alignment group is a command called wrap text. And if I click wrap text, that is exactly what it does. We'll look at how to handle that so it appears a little uh, uh, better later. Also, H6 this one here. Wrap text and it has wrapped the text in that particular cell. So we can tick that one off. Now it says use a formula to calculate the average costs. Well the average cost I want to be in that cell for this particular group of uh, cells and the way I can do it is to click in average cost and then in the drop arrow next to the auto sum I'll see that there is an average function so I click the average function and I don't want to include the total cost of the fruit by fruit so at this stage I'm just going to select the cells that I want to include that is E7 to G7 to get the average. And if I hold down the control key and press enter it will show me the average cost. Then all I need to do is to auto fill that down. I did that by clicking on the auto fill button in the bottom right hand corner and simply dragging down and that has copied that formula down. Now it says um, use a formula to calculate the total costs. We've done the average costs, so that's that one there. That cell was deepened of course because I uh, text wrapped that and the whole row was changed. So we're going to look at how to change that for better appearance as I mentioned shortly. The formula to calculate total costs. I want to put a formula in there 
the auto sum formula and it has looked across and it has guessed correctly control enter and now I can auto fill that formula down in exactly the same way as I did with the average cost tick change the alignment in column D to change an alignment I need to select the column by clicking on the column heading and change the alignment in the alignment group to right and you'll notice that the data is now right aligned save the file to the Windows desktop file save as put it onto the desktop either by clicking there or browsing depending on the setup of the computer you're using we need to scroll up click on the desktop give the file a meaningful name and then click save that's the procedure you can of course save the file to any other drive on the computer it might be a shared drive uh, an A drive uh, whatever that will depend on the company with which you work so we'll cancel that go back to our uh, exercise insert a row below row 6 now I know that if I want to insert a row below then I need to go to the actual row below because new rows are inserted above so I right click and insert and that has inserted a row below row 6 insert a column before column H columns are inserted to the left of selected columns so I insert and there is my new column you'll notice that the uh, columns have been re-alphabetized -alpha and the rows have been renumbered that takes care of the insertions it has also taken care of the row references and column references in the formulas change the orientation to landscape that is in the page layout in the page setup group orientation landscape so that when this file is printed it will print as landscape you don't see any difference here in the worksheet itself but in print preview as we'll see shortly we will center the worksheet horizontally and vertically for printing purposes what we do here we go to the margin tab and down to custom margins and put a tick in center on page horizontally and vertically and you'll see the indication here of what happens in other words the left and right margins are now equal and the top and bottom margins are equal if we look at it in print preview there I see the data has been horizontally and vertically centered on the page for printing purposes check the spelling well spelling is checked by pressing F7 and it's a matter of going through the um, spelling dialog box and changing as needed so remember F7 is the spell check button rename sheet 1 as first quarter I'm just going to move that one down a bit right click on the sheet and rename first quarter insert a new worksheet 
in Excel 2013 we click the new sheet button there is our new sheet create a column chart to show the produce what I want to do here is to create a column chart to show the produce, the months and the data to do that I select the data that I want to chart and we'll insert a column chart by going to insert uh, charts here's the column chart we'll put in a two-dimensional column and there is my chart we'll just drag it down around there remember to insert a chart you need to select the data first I'm going to undo that last action and delete this chart because here's a little tip and trick that will virtually get you the job if you select data to chart press the F11 key and you'll be given a chart on its own worksheet which can then be formatted as needs be because you have the chart tools very very handy remember select the data press F11 and you are given a chart on its own sheet I'll now delete that chart or delete the worksheet and we have done that one change the width of column D so the contents fit within well I'm going to just drag column D across a little bit and now I see that XYZ Fruiterers completely fits within column D and also the total cost by month has um, has been uh, put on one line even though the text was wrapped and I can do the same thing with column I because I want the total cost by fruit to be all on one line there we'll just bring that back a little bit there so that we can see our ticks so we'll change the width of column D right align the data in column D well we've already done that but let's see when I click on column D I notice that the right align button is highlighted so I always know where I am in the formatting by looking at what has been selected here bold all headings and change the font to 14 points now the headings will change are these these and this and what I'm going to do is to select that data and when I hold down the control key I can select cells that are not next to each other so with my control key held down I can do all of this at the one time so now what I want to do is to bold all the headings and change the font to size 14 and there I see that is exactly what has happened I also notice that because the font is that size that a couple of the columns are truncated so I just need to uh, adjust those slightly there so we we'll bold all the heading and change the font to 14 points our next task is to use the merge and center command and in the task I want to merge and center the heading XYZ Fruiterers so the concept here is to drag across the cells across which you want to merge and center so remember that average cost is in J6 so I don't need to go to K6 so now I click the merge and center button and that is exactly what it has done I could if I wish format that so it looks a little bit better we'll change our font size there to 14 as well so there is my 
merge and centre taken care of for appearance sake. Centre the labels in E6 to I6. E6 to I6. Centre a line. Small change, but better for appearance. Change the active cell to G2. All I need to do there is to go to the cell by clicking in it. So I can do that simply with the use of the mouse. Copy the contents of D9. Right click to select the data. My apologies, left click to select the data, then right click to see the copy command and go to D18, right click and paste. Press escape to remove the scrolling marquee. Delete the contents of D18. Click in it to select it and press the delete key. That's all you need to do because remember in Excel when you have selected a cell you actually select all the data in it. You don't have to drag through text as you do in Word. So we've done that and we've done that. Now it says select all the data and print preview. Well what I want to do here is to go to file, print, and there is my print preview. To print as much as we can on one page, we go to File, Print, and in the bottom, in the scaling, click the drop arrow and fit the sheet on one page. In other words, shrink the print out so it fits on one page. And that is what you would see. So remember, practice is the name of the game. You can download this file at the address in the description below the video. It's free to download. Please do so and good luck with your test. We would also like to have you as a subscriber to the channel and please click the subscribe button that you see and you will be automatically notified of uh, new videos as we upload them in your email. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time and good luck.